Hey there, uh, my name is Jake McMahon. I am the campus pastor of the Park Hill campus of Restore. And I'm really excited that you're joining us online today. I want to, I want to start by asking you this question, okay? Have you ever forgotten something important? Uh, this could be someone's birthday that you care about, your, your anniversary, uh, maybe a kid's sporting event. Like you, you just forgot something important. Here, if you're watching online right now, you can pause the video, you can chat with your spouse or whoever you're watching with, share th with them the time that you forgot something important. Uh, this happened for me recently, and I need, I need us to have an agreement right here, right now. This is a safe space, okay? This right here, us, this is a judgment-free zone. Okay, I'm gonna share something pretty raw, pretty real, and pretty recent with you. So here in Kansas City, my, my daughter, Raylan, she's in kindergarten, and she's uh, doing great, okay? That's besides the point. But every single month, there is this day on Wednesday called Early Release Day. And early release is when the kids get out at 2 o'clock instead of 4 o'clock. They have an assembly on this day, and this happens every single month. And for the entirety of her year in kindergarten, my wife and I are like, okay, early release day. We're going to make sure we're home early. We just coordinated the way to do that. And we have been successful every single month this year until literally two weeks ago. We are sitting together. My wife and I get to work closely alongside of each other. So we're sitting together in the office, and we get a call from the neighbor, which is fine. Usually they're asking to play with the neighbor kids or whatever later in the day. And it's our neighbor saying, hey... Raylan is at my house, and immediately all of the emotions flood over, the, the panic, it's early release day, we forgot to get our kid, she's like, okay, I'm coming, she like hangs up the phone so quickly, she packs her bag, she runs out of the office, I'm like, can I, can I come help, and it's this frantic moment where like so many emotions are going through your head, I forgot my child, we weren't there to get her off the bus. She walked into her home. She knows the code to our front door and probably walked around looking for us. And then she did the right thing. She walked five doors down to the neighbor's house. And it's the worst feeling in the entire world, forgetting someone that you love. Luckily, Raylan, she did the right thing. She went down to the neighbor's house. They called us, but like we were broke. I'm still, it's been several weeks now. I hate remembering this moment because it felt so bad to forget about someone that I love and care for. I hope I'm not alone in this, that maybe you have forgotten something important or forgotten a moment that was crucial for you to be present and today is probably one of those days. If you're watching this live on Sunday, today we are celebrating Pentecost. Pentecost is a day in, inside of the, the, the church calendar. And, and Pentecost specifically is designed to celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. You see, in the church calendar, we love, we love to celebrate Christmas. We love to celebrate Easter. And I want to make sure that you hear me, that Christmas and Easter, they are extremely important holidays. Jesus coming to earth as fully God and fully man on Christmas is one of the most significant days in human history, followed by him dying on the cross and raising from the dead on Easter. So I don't want to discount the value that Christmas and Easter have. But... But the Holy Spirit coming should be so closely tied to those days. It should be synonymous with Jesus' ascension and sending us his spirit. And we celebrate that on Pentecost. But Pentecost is often lost in our church calendar relegated even farther away than Mother's Day and Father's Day and Fourth of July. We lose sight of it. And I would venture to say that we often forego remembering and celebrating Pentecost because 
at least for me, I often relegate the Holy Spirit to the back corner of the house. I, 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 I push the Holy Spirit aside. And for some reason, I try, I struggle to talk about the Holy Spirit. And I think it's ultimately because I struggle to understand it. And we, we struggle to understand the person of the Holy Spirit. And if I struggle to understand the personhood of the Holy Spirit, then I will struggle to remember to celebrate the, the holiday dedicated to the Holy Spirit coming to the early church. So today we're in the second week of this series called The Holy Spirit. And today, wherever and whenever you're watching, we are celebrating Pentecost. We're going to talk about Pentecost. We're going to remember Pentecost. And we are going to understand personally what happened, why that day was so important, and the role that the Holy Spirit plays in our lives today. So we're in the second week of this series, and the Holy Spirit is a divine person the third member of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But for some of us, uh, the Spirit is mysterious and he's unknown. Like we can easily, I, I can speak for myself personally, I can easily relate to God the Father. Like I can understand him as, as creator. God that created the heavens and the earth and he rules over it and gave us dominion to do so as well. And I would say I even better understand Jesus. Like Jesus, God walking amongst us, the incarnate God sent through the Virgin Mary and he existed and his ministry was impactful and it was powerful. He put on flesh and God could feel what we felt. But the Holy Spirit, or in our case, the forgotten God, we're often not sure how to relate or really understand what the Spirit does. So that's why we're doing this series. Because my hope is that we, collectively together, we get to understand the role of the Holy Spirit that he plays in our lives. He wants to play a role. He's present inside of us, and and he fills us. He filled the first disciples, and that is what happened on Pentecost. And the Spirit... The Spirit is ultimately what makes our relationship with God personal. Personal to us. Jesus, who I, I mentioned earlier, the, the person that, of the Trinity that I feel like I can relate to most and can hear from most, the teachings, everything that he embodied. Jesus, in the Gospel of John, says this line that I often struggle to really even believe. So he says this in John chapter 16, verse 7. He says, but very truly I tell you, he's talking to the disciples at this point and and the crowds, "It it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go... I, Jesus, will send him to you. Jesus says it is better that he goes. The Greek word for advocate in this verse is parakletos, often translated as comforter, uh, comforter, counselor, helper, and often synonymous with this idea of the Holy Spirit. Jesus knows it's going to be better for him to leave us than for him to stay because he knows what's coming. And to this day, it still blows my mind that Jesus, okay, Jesus, who existed for 33 years on this earth, but really only did public ministry for about three, I sometimes play this game in my head that what if Jesus had done 50 years of ministry and he had lived to be about 80 years old? How big would our New Testament be? It would be so big that we probably wouldn't even be able to carry it 
so many miracles, so many teachings. What if he, wouldn't it be better for him to have existed on the earth for 80 years and do 50 years of public ministry? But Jesus knows for some reason it is part of God's perfect timing that he would be crucified and ascend after just three years of ministry and would leave us, his early disciples, the church, with the Holy Spirit. And then we reach Pentecost. This is exactly what's coming. This is exactly what we're celebrating. This is exactly what the church remembers. They remember the day of Pentecost. And this moment that we celebrate happens right here in Acts, okay? So the disciples, they are in the upper room waiting, praying, fasting, worshiping. And then we read this, okay? Acts chapter 2, verse 1 starts here. So when the day of Pentecost came... They were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be like tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd of them came together in bewilderment because each one of them had heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them. They said, oh, no, no. They've just had too much wine. Uh, what is happening in these verses? We're celebrating Pentecost today. We're celebrating this moment, the moment that the Holy Spirit comes to envelop each of the people in the upper room, and this transpires. That's exactly right. We are celebrating the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of, of God's relationship with us becoming personal. Having Jesus set on this earth walking with the disciples and him saying, it's going to be better that I leave so that you get the indwellment of the Holy Spirit. To guide you, to lead you, to challenge you. And when the Holy Spirit fills us, like miraculous things happen. God's ministry becomes personal through us. It's beautiful to watch the movement of the believers because of the indwellment of the Holy Spirit. It gives authority, it gives power, it gives confidence. So that then begs the question, when does the Holy Spirit fill us? When does it fill me? Or maybe one other way you could ask the question, question is, when does the Holy Spirit, when does someone receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? Well, if you're asking the disciples in Acts on the day of Pentecost, they're going to say, that day. It was like wind blowing and tongues of fire and, and, and speaking in other languages. That is when the Holy Spirit filled them. They were given the gift of the Holy Spirit. Here's the challenge is we don't, we don't see any moments similar to Pentecost anywhere else in Scripture, and we don't really see it ever again in church history. So when is it that we 
receive the gift of the Holy Spirit because if we believe the Holy Spirit is still alive and active and is the personal embodiment of God within us, when do we receive it? Paul teaches, and I think it's pretty clear in Scripture, that the Holy Spirit is given to those that profess faith and trust in Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I think that that truth is evident in a couple passages of Scripture. The first coming through Ephesians 1, verse 13. And it says in Ephesians 1, Are you also, and you were also included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, when you believed, you were marked with him. You were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. So Paul right here, he's writing to the church in Ephesus, making it clear that those that believe the message of truth about Jesus have received the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. And then in Romans 8, verse 9, he says this, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. This is like an A plus B scenario. If you have not yet received the Spirit, you are not yet one with Christ. And if you are not one with Christ, you have not received the Spirit. But as we see as Ephesians, those that put their trust in faith in Jesus have received the Spirit. Those that belong to Christ have received in that gift. And then we jump back to the book of Acts. So the Holy Spirit shows up, right, on the day of Pentecost. Everyone starts hearing the disciples speak in their own language about Jesus. And then Peter offers an extremely powerful teaching. And this is, in fact, going to be one of his first teachings that he's going to offer in the book of Acts. Looking at chapter 2, verse 36, he says, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. He's looking at the Jews, and he said, you guys crucified him. But God has made him Lord and Messiah. And the, the, the people, they're, they're cut to their core. And when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they said to people, Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's it. This receiving of the Holy Spirit is clear and evident upon our ability to say, yes, Jesus, I trust you as Lord and Savior, the ability to guide my life for the forgiveness of my sins. And people walk that out in baptism and they are receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, the personal relationship that God wants with every single one of us, you and I get to receive the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead can indwell you if you put your faith and trust in the relationship with him. So how does it happen? How does the Holy Spirit fill us? I don't necessarily have an exact answer to this question. Many people have described this as overcoming feelings of laughter or emotion, the, the tingling sensation in their fingers or their ha hands or this uncontrollable desire or experience that they cannot explain when they're in worship or in prayer or reading scripture. It, how he fills us is not necessarily the question. What it feels like is personal. It's personal for each one of us, and it looks differently. And people receive gifts differently, gifts that look different, but gifts that are from the indwellment of the Holy Spirit. The beautiful part is, is we can continue to ask the Holy Spirit to fill us day after day 
after day by just praying, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. Fill me, guide me, lead me, teach me, show me. Come Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit does fill us, that leads us to our last question is why? Why does the Holy Spirit fill us? I could probably spend another 40, 50 minutes, two, three hours talking about why the Holy Spirit fills us and what the Holy Spirit's role is in our life. But for the next several weeks of this series, we're going to talk about three things on why the Holy Spirit fills us. The Holy Spirit fills us to free us to offer freedom that is a relationship with Jesus, to remind us of that freedom, freedom from the bondage of sin, the constant personal reminder that Jesus Christ took it from me and I can just give it to him. He frees us. The Holy Spirit equips us, equips us to remember why we were called, to remember the teachings of Jesus, to be mobilized as Christ followers, and the Holy Spirit empowers us. He empowers us to do the works of Jesus, to be mobilized, to be sent out, to watch the early church exist. The reason that Jesus said, it would be better for you that I go and I leave you the Holy Spirit because he knew what was going to happen. He knew what was going to happen on the day of Pentecost. Because on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes, people say, now what do we do? Peter says, repent and be baptized. And 3,000 people are baptized that day. 3,000 people receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is why Jesus said it was, would be better, because he took a broken, sinful, imperfect human like myself, invited the Holy Spirit to indwell me, to be mobilized for the works of ministry, and said, the church will grow faster without me if my disciples have the Holy Spirit. Where are you on this journey? My hope is that if you're sitting there watching this for some reason and, you, and you're thinking to yourself, I want that gift of the Holy Spirit, that you remember ultimately that you want the gift of Jesus. You want to believe that Jesus is who he says he is, that he died on the cross, he was broken for your transgressions and your sins, and you make this personal decision today to put your faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior and you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If, if, if this is you right now and you want this, and you want to maybe even walk this step out in baptism, Jesus, I believe that you are who you say you are. I want to repent of my sins and I want to be baptized. We want to go on that journey with you. Right now, you probably are seeing an email on the screen that's Theo, he's our digital pastor. Or if you're like, I want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, I want to walk that out in baptism, let us know in the comments, let us know in the chat, because we will come celebrate that decision with you. Whether you're in South Kansas City or the Northland or in St. Louis or in Maryland or Pennsylvania or Michigan or Florida, we want to come to you and celebrate. We want to baptize you. We want to go on that journey with you and we want the Holy Spirit to fill you so that you can be mobilized just as they were on the day of Pentecost. That is why we celebrate. Because God said, I want a relationship with you that is personal. It'll be better that my son Jesus leaves so that you can get received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I, I love you. I don't understand you sometimes, but you know. You knew that it would be better that, that me, <laughs> broken, old, imperfect me, who hears from the Spirit sometimes and is disobedient, but sometimes I am. And inside of my obedience, you're blessed. And inside my disobedience, sometimes often you are glorified, God, because you are perfect and you are working. And I am so grateful that you have given your gift to the Holy Spirit. God, thank you for who you are and for making our relationship with you personal. We love you and we're grateful for you. It's in your name we pray. 
Amen.